It's been our top story all morning. In a matter of hours, Boris Johnson will move into number 10 Downing Street. It means, of course, that Theresa May will formally stand down as Prime Minister. The political obituaries weren't so kind when she announced she was going to go. But what will her legacy in Northern Ireland be defined by? Let's talk to Felicity Houston, who's a Northern Ireland Conservative member and businesswoman, and to Nigel Cawthorn, who's written biographies of both Theresa May and Boris Johnson. Good morning to you both. Good morning. And thank you Good for morning. joining us. Um, Felicity, I suppose on a, on a scale of, of 1 to 10, how would you rate uh, Theresa May's uh, Northern Ireland legacy? Well, I suppose, oh goodness, um, maybe a three, well, it depends how you want to look at it. I mean, you know, six or seven in raising our profile because we are the cause celebre in Westminster nowadays, aren't we? In all our shades and, and complexities, actually making the place work any better about it too. I mean, we are stuck in a morass of inertia with people suffering in all directions because we don't have a government and we don't have a Secretary of State who will make any useful decisions to, to move things on. So, you know, it's a peculiar thing to say, uh, suddenly people have discovered Northern Ireland who never knew about us, didn't understand anything about us and suddenly we're very fashionable in Westminster. But as I say, as, as for day-to-day -day people living here, she's done very little, unfortunately. What's been your biggest frustration then, Felicity? What, what, what has bothered you the most? Well, I'll, of course, Brexit. I mean, I voted to leave. I still believe that that is the, the, the right thing to do and I cannot believe that three years later we are still goating about, as we would say, not having left. I mean, that's the worst of it all and she, she I don't think her heart was ever in it. She never saw it as an opportunity. She saw it as something that had to try and be done. And if you go into a, a difficult project thinking you're going to come out losing, then that's what happens, you know? So I think that's been the biggest thing. Does it, part of you ever think, though, that she really had an, an, an impossible job and it's hard to think of any politician who would have been the perfect Prime Minister in such circumstances? Well, it was always going to be difficult, but it just got worse and worse, didn't it? I mean, and then there was, you know, amongst everything else, we had this catastrophic election campaign, the longest election campaign ever, and she went from having a really good um, uh, position in the polls to, you know, at, at borderline being able to form a government because it was so badly mishandled. I mean, that, that's one of the other things, you know, it just went on and on like that. She made a series of decisions that did not work out well and I don't think necessarily other people who were in that would have taken over instead of her would have made those decisions. Nigel Cawthorn, how do you think Theresa May will be feeling today because this is a woman who dedicated her life to public service and, and clung on in there th throughout the past two years um, relentlessly. Will she see her, the end of her premiership as a failure do you think or, or what will she be thinking today? I can't remember who said it, but one famous politician said that all political careers end in failure. Uh, and I think certainly she's had more failure than, than any anyone because really nothing's happened uh, since the referendum and, and, as your other correspondent said, the disastrous election that she called immediately afterwards. Uh, the whole government's been stuck in paralysis over Brexit. When you when you wrote your biography about her, how do you, how do you study her, and what did you find that 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 drives her? Well, as, as you say, she, she has dedicated her whole life to, to, to public service. She's obviously a, a, a good and, and decent, if slightly dull woman. Um, uh, and I wonder what, what what's is, what wrong though. With, what, sorry to interrupt, but this comes up a lot, and it really fascinates me. Actually, what's wrong with being dull? <laughs> because sometimes <laughs> Boris is, you know, you know, we all know his track record, and he's sort of branded as, you know, this character, and he's entertaining. But is that what makes a good prime minister? I suppose we're going to find out. But what's so wrong with being dull? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I, because of uh, all the interest at the moment, I, of course, I had to read reread my my two biographies, uh, and I can tell you, the, the Boris Johnson books are much better to read because he, he's interesting and 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 fun. And I think you do need a bit of that in in in, in politics. Um, part of the role of, of a of a prime minister or any politician is, is to be a bit of an entertainer. Yeah, a bit of a uh, one, and, not an all-out entertainer, yeah. though. Well, yes, yes, but, but they need some, some, some serious stuff uh, behind them too. But then, then we have Boris, who, who is a fiercely intelligent man, although he does kind of um, act the buffoon as much as, as, much as he can. Um, but uh, I read his column in, in the Daily Telegraph and, and he, he could put a, a serious uh, intellectual argument together.
Felicity, how do you feel about Boris Johnson then as Prime Minister? What do you think his premiership will mean for Northern Ireland? I, I, I wait to see. Um, he wasn't my choice. Um, I, I got a Hobson's choice um, with the two of them. I had thought Hunt had a, a chance and then he came up with that ridiculous thing about fox hunting and I've been opposed to that all my life so I could never vote for him after that. He made the same mistake as Theresa May about that nonsense. So we got stuck with Boris. Um, I would have liked Sajid Javid as our next Prime Minister but unfortunately he didn't get enough support within the parliamentary party so i mean i don't know you know it is he is a what we see is not the, i think the real boris as i'm sure your colleague there will, will agree and that's the problem we don't really know him i mean he did seem to have been very successful as mayor of london nobody can doubt that the olympics were a tremendous success there and that's a big project that he was over so you know heavily involved in so uh, it really is a wait and see um so he wouldn't have been my choice mm -hmm. but uh, let, let let us see uh, i mean he will be if nothing else a breath of fresh air and you know you said what's wrong with dull well look what dull did to us <laughs> you know so maybe a bit of vava of him is what we need, a can-do attitude that he's very much embracing. But, like, substance is everything, Felicity, and I really get your point, but, you know, um, va va voom come October 31st mightn't be what you're looking for if um, the, the, the deadline is extended again. Well, I think there is no doubt that the man is incredibly clever. You know, he got a scholarship to Eton. He's not one of these guys with the silver spoon. He went to Eton because he was clever enough to have his fees paid for him. He then went to Balliol, which you don't get into if you're a bit dead. Him, you know, and he studied classics where I gather one of his lecturers uh, lectures most of the time in either Greek or Latin and you had to respond in the same. The man is not stupid. The man has great capacity and great intellectual capacity. It's whether he's going to actually demonstrate it or not and how he's going to show us that side of him which we really haven't seen yet. But it has to be grounded in realism as well and he's full of optimism but we yes. know what the Irish government is saying. We know what Brussels is saying. She went, Theresa May went back, I think we all lost count, the, the amount of time she went back. I just wonder, are you really 100% confident that he will actually do something different? Well, I hope so. No, I mean, nobody can be, but I mean, you know, the body language said it all when she used to arrive. You know, we would watch her pulling up and that sort of cringing position she took, like a supplicant, which I think was actually how um, Boris described her. You know, he, she never looked like somebody who was going in with a good hand and to negotiate. But she had a deal, but she just knew that she couldn't sell it to her own party. No, exactly. She yeah. made a deal that was unsell. I mean, what, what sort of leadership is that? You don't make a deal with people that you know your people aren't going to agree but to. But what kind of party is that that can't compromise? Oh, well, I mean, there was lots of compromise. People were willing to accept stuff, a lot of stuff in that deal that people were very uncomfortable with, but there were some things people just couldn't accept. But even Boris voted for it. <laughs> oh, I know he did, exactly. Yeah. I mean, look, that, that's one of the things about him. You know, that there are many of us who will remember that Boris voted for it too. There's a list of them who, when push came to shove, couldn't stick up for their principles. Now, maybe that's compromise, is okay. it? I don't know. Interesting times ahead. Just yes. final word to you, uh, Nigel. What what will Theresa May do now? <laughs> I, I, well, she's only sixty-two, so she's she's got a, a bit of time to go. Well, whether she'll go back in, in, in into um, uh, she used to work for, for the Bank of England. Uh, unfortunately, that, that senior politicians like her would normally uh, be searching for a, a post in Europe, and yeah. I think that's probably out of the question now. Yeah, I think so. Thanks very much, though, and thanks for joining us, Felicity Houston and Nigel Cawthorn. Full coverage of Boris Johnson on the road to becoming PM officially today on our News at One and on Radio Foil all day. That's it from The Breakfast Show. Thanks so much for listening. We will talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.